If you're looking for a behind-the-scenes insight into music, you've come to the right place. Remember to subscribe to be notified of new content. Many have said that music has healing properties. Well, in 2020, we have faced a one in 100 year event with the COVID-19 pandemic. And music is one element that has helped carry us through. But this pandemic has changed our life in so many ways, especially so for Australian singer-songwriters who were once accustomed to performing their music in a live setting. Join me as I unearth what goes on behind the scenes during these COVID times across the Australian music scene. This is Behind the music with LED. Hi, my name's Aidan Bradley. I'm based in Brisbane, Queensland. I would describe my music as inspired by sort of like the early 2010s indie movements, so like bands like Frightened Rabbit and The Wombats and The National and sort of stuff like that. Um, and there's also sort of like a lot of older influences in there as well. Like growing up, I listened to a lot of the music my dad listened to, so like he was really into Americana and stuff like that, so. You know, bands like Credence, artists like Bob Dylan, Roy Orbison, you know, they all sort of came up and I, it's, it's, I always sort of felt like it was kind of like a, a sort of a modern-ish kind of uh, version of like that sort of early 2010s, like the 2010, 2011, 2012 sort of uh, indie music sort of made by a regular guy, you know, because that's, I feel like that's sort of what, um, was so special to me about that kind of music is that like all of the people in the bands they felt like like people um and i think that's kind of this sort of authenticity is kind of what i sort of strive for so i i mean it's kind of it's kind of difficult for me to say that anything sort of led me towards being a singer songwriter it's sort of just music was kind of always around when i was a kid like my grandmother was a huge classical buff my grandfather really liked like swing and and, and big band and pre-war jazz and then my mother was in the Queensland Symphony Orchestra, so, you know, she knew how to practice an instrument, so it sort of just kind of kind of came up. And I, like, I'd been writing songs since I was about 15, and then I left high school and I was kind of in and out of bands for a while, playing sort of different instruments, but never music that was entirely my own. So I guess I, 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 there was, like, kind of one stage where I thought, well, I've got all these songs written that I'm not going to use with any of these projects, so I'm going to start working on them myself. And then it kind of just sort of went on. I mean, there was like some good reactions to some of the earlier stuff that I released and then, you know, it keeps going and going and going and it's, it's a really, really great, really great thing to be involved with. Um, I honestly can't, I can't picture doing anything else, so uh, I'm really glad that I've made that work. Uh, expectations versus reality, I feel like it holds up, it holds up pretty similar. I mean, I always, in, in Australia, we don't, there's, there's a few things that we don't have in Australia that you sort of read about if you ever read, uh, like, sort of, the, the quintessential like American sort of uh, biographies where like we don't have like a college scene because in America they like a, a new band gets some traction they get sent out on the college scene and they they go all over the country playing in different colleges to people who like have nothing better to do um, we don't really have that uh, in Australia it's kind of like I feel like there's almost like a bit more of an every man for themselves kind of approach um, but at the same time there's an immensely supportive scene there for everybody. Um, that was something that I didn't anticipate. I didn't anticipate the kind of relationships that I would build. Like, some of my best friends I've met through playing shows with, or doing studio sessions with, or stuff like that. I never, I never would have anticipated that, like, I would have developed the kind of friendships that I have from music. You know, it, it, it really does sort of combine the best of, like, business and, and the pleasure to a degree, because you get to do the thing that you love with people that you really like being around. Um, which, I, I don't know, as like, a, as like a 16 year old who was thinking about becoming a musician, that, that was just something that never really occurred to me. Really glad it's there. Uh, if I'm honest with you, it's, it's good. I think performing in a live setting is, is kind, of, kind of like the, um, the, the, the rite of passage for a lot of musicians. I think it's sort of you, you spend, or at least this is my experience, so like whatever, um, but like you spend your sort of first year not doing that great of a job of it, but then you sort of, through, you know, repeated exposure, you get better and better and better and you, you get better at bantering. Like I remember when I was bantering with an audience when I started out and I was so nervous, all I did was swear. 
a bunch. I, I used to just drop so many F words on stage because I couldn't think of anything to say. Um, but that's that's long behind me. Now. I mean, I still do swear quite a bit. But that's that's largely long behind me. Um, I think I think I I mean I would always I would never record a song without playing it live to kind of gauge the reaction of it. I think it's 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 part of like if you think of taking exams in school as a method to, to learn. You know, if you ace a math exam, you've gotten better at math by having to grind out those skills, study, and then apply them. Um, I think playing in a live setting is very similar, because if you, you sit down, you can play something perfectly, completely on your own in your bedroom, that's great, but then when you can take all of the factors that a live performance involves, you know, other musicians, a crowd, a PA that's maybe not great, and you can still perform to the same level, I think you can actually give yourself a big pat on the back as a musician because it's really not the easiest thing to do. So I think, uh, above anything, playing live, if we're talking about strictly musicianship, uh, makes you a lot better at what you're doing. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, if we want to talk about getting the music to an audience, it's that you, you can't beat it. You can't beat engaging with a room of people with something that you've created and then building a relationship, not just with between them and you, but between them and the art that you've made. So I think I think playing live is, is, is really like one of the quintessential sort of things. I think it's very, very important. And I think young musicians or even musicians starting out should just try and do as much of it as they can. It doesn't matter if no one goes. It doesn't matter if uh, you know the venue's empty. I think it's it's all it's all very important in building your own character as an artist, both in the perspective of the actual musicianship and in the perspective of you sort of trying to build a career. I think I think they're sort of one and the same, largely, and I think it's very very important. Uh, online marketing with music has been tricky and. If you're a musician watching this and you think it's tricky, please know that you're not alone, uh, because a lot of the tools are there, uh, but they don't quite work as well as they should. Um, and you know, if you think that you're gonna release something and then you're going to build an entire following on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, I think that is a very big part of it. But I think you do need to build the real world connections, and you need to get out, you need to go to shows and meet people, and and become as involved in your scene as possible. I think the the online marketing is 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 very good and has its place, and is obviously incredibly valuable when done right. Um, but I think also it 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 is. I have found it to be useless without the other, without actually going out and building those relationships. I don't think the online marketing. Can work. I don't think either of them can work in a vacuum, is what I'm trying to say here incredibly and eloquently. Um, I think both of those things go hand in hand, um, and, you know, it's, it's... I found that the, the people that came to my early shows were largely other musicians whose shows I'd wanted to check out and, and building those relationships up, and then from there the online thing kind of follows. I also think that, like, being concerned with numbers is, is kind of... I can understand. I can understand it on like a very deep level why it's easy to base self worth upon that. But I think if you just keep making good music and playing good shows, your numbers will just come regardless. It's it's you know if you if you create something good that people want to interact with, they they will. People will find a way to. The internet is very big, and people have a lot of spare time. Uh, probably the highlight of my career so far had been I had a single launch last year in 2019, and I sold out Betty's Espresso and Bar, which was a venue in West End. Um, it could only hold about 50 people, it was for like intimate sort of singer-songwriter events. And uh, like, there were people standing outside, there were people standing in the bathroom, there were like, completely, it was completely packed, it was like a can of sardines. And you could hear a coin drop in between songs. It was so, it was just such a, such a, like, bewildering and humbling experience. Uh, having that many people want to sort of give their time to my art and I think that like I've played sold out shows before that and I've played sold out shows after but like that one's always going to be very special in my sort of mind I felt like that kind of felt like the first time I'd properly 
come to grips with and and embraced like my personal voice as an artist. Like I kind of felt like it was like entirely me on stage, not me like trying to be anything else or not me trying to write a song that I think people would like or whatever. It was just very much just me on stage. And I think that's sort of when I like solidified my personality as a musician. So that 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 night at Betty's is always going to be really special to me. Community radio is 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 by and large one of the best things for any local Australian artist. I would be nowhere without Four Triple Z. I don't think. Uh, Four Triple Z. Uh, this is Brisbane based, obviously. So um, Four Triple Z is our our local community, our biggest local community radio station, and um, they have always always supported me and any other artist that I know with either airplay, interviews, just anything. Um, building those relationships with community radio and supporting community radio is is one of the best things that you could do. Not only from like your own perspective, but for the perspective of the rest of the scene. Um, because as as the the stations grow as you grow it's not like uh like like nova or whatever where it's kind of just been the same sort of thing for the last 10 years um but they grow as as the scene grows and and as everyone sort of gets around that uh the more people that do the better it is for everybody involved and um a lot of people discover a lot of great music through community radio stations either they're just driving and just flicking through the stations because they're sick of listening to ads or whatever but like hit up your local radio station try try to start building relationships just They'll do it. They, I have not, I have not spoken to a single person from community radio who's not excited about whatever music is coming out of that city. It is, it's, it's a great resource, and it's, it's just great. It's fun. Like I listen to Four Triple Z in my spare time because I like it. Um, and then I hear my friends on it, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's gone full circle. It's great. Um, community radio, it's never, no one could under, no one could ever undersell how important it is to local musicians. I guess it, it's kind of hard to answer this question without talking about the pandemic because, you know, it kind of forced us all to really rapidly adapt towards uh, being so much more active online and, and you know, trying harder to build those relationships without actually going and playing in venues and stuff like that. Um, for a while I was posting like a video a week-ish of just like any random thing that I could think of. I tried to get other local musicians involved. There's there's one with me and Finn Taylor from Finn's Contingency Plan and one with me from Ty Williams, who's a fantastic local drummer. Um, and I really like doing those because it was just like, we're making content, it's safe. It was in a house uh, that we could sanitize and everything. Um, and it was just a great way of putting more content, like putting more content out there with, you know, stuff that people could, could see and interact with. They maybe saw a song that we did and they liked it and they, you know, wanted to engage with that. Um, I received some really kind messages during those times and, and sort of, obviously because everything's kind of weird now, um, any sort of any sort of reaching out and any sort of kindness is always deeply appreciated. So anyone leaving like positive comments or sending a message saying, hey, I like what you did here. It's all really, it's all really important. Um, 2021 is looking to be pretty big. Uh, I've got my next record. It's written, the demos are all done. We're ready to start recording it, uh, which I'm really excited about. It kind of feels like the other two records were kind of prequels to this one a little bit. Um, as much as I love both Boat Ramps and Low Key High Strung, um, I really feel that this upcoming record is my best work. Um, and that's largely because I involved more people. I got I, I, I wanted to work with more people. I brought on a co-producer. Uh, there's a bunch of other musicians on there playing stuff that I can play, but not nearly as well. Um, and you know, it's. I'm just really looking forward to getting back on stage and to, to to getting back into what I believe is the heart of the local community, which is just people enjoying music together. You know, I think that's the, the the big takeaway is that like music is fun and you can enjoy it with people who also think music is fun. And I think, I mean, I know a lot of people that have missed that, and I've missed that a lot personally. So I I, I can't wait for that to come back. Um, but yeah, new record is done, 2021. It's gonna come out. It's gonna be sick. I'm really, really looking forward to putting it out into the world. Um, words of encouragement, I would say, would be... I used to get really bummed out, because uh, social media can do that, I think. Social media can be really bad for you as well as really good, because if you're just scrolling through Instagram or whatever and you're seeing all these people doing, doing really, really well and you're wondering why you aren't getting the same opportunities that they are, you know, there was a couple people in particular that I really did, and I did that a bunch until I met someone who did that with me. Um, and then the whole thing just felt so stupid. 
you know, the whole comparing yourself to other people, it just felt so dumb, you know, and it's, it's, it's really easy for me to sit here and say that it's a waste of time, but it really, really is. There is so much more you could be doing with your time than agonizing over what people that you feel like you're in competition with are doing. No one is in competition with anyone. Everyone is just trying to make a career out of music and when you feel like that, what I always what I always do is start focusing on the actual music. I start practicing or I start writing or I st read a theory textbook or something like that. And I always found that when you sort of get back in touch with the actual, purely the musicianship of what you're doing, suddenly you kind of remember why you're doing it and it's not necessarily for marketing stuff and trying to sell merch or records it's because you like making music and that's the thing that you want to do so by all means I think some of the best things that you can do if you're just feeling a bit forest for the treesy is just get off Instagram and get off Facebook for a little bit and sit in front of the keyboard and practice harmonies I don't know that's what I do um but like I think that's very much I think we can get very caught up in social media when Actually, what's happening on social media is people only showing the best bits of their life. Generally, no one posts failures. I certainly, I certainly never have. I don't know anyone who's posted like catastrophic failures that they've had on social media because it's not what we want to see. Like, it's it's social media has has kind of um, kind of uh, conditioned us to thinking that everyone's lives are exceptional when that's just not it's not true. People have exceptional moments. I don't think anyone's life is exceptional. If that makes sense. This is coming across really self-helpy, and I apologize. Um, yeah, uh, uh, keep practicing. You, you can always practice more.